This is Twit. All right, so Foxconn has been grabbing headlines these past few weeks with its announcements that it would be bringing manufacturing plants to the United States, and along with it, a whole lot of jobs. Uh, they aren't done with those announcements, or so it seems. Joining us to talk about the greater strategy of, of this latest news is Sam Abuel Smid from Navigant Research. Welcome back, Sam. Hey, Jason, and uh, nice to meet you, Ron. <laughs> hey, Sam, how you doing? It's great to have you back. It's always good to get you on. So the first big announcement involved Foxconn's planned LCD plant in Wisconsin. Uh, but what do you know about the news that Foxconn might invest in Michigan? Well, actually, we know very little about it. There was a report this morning in the South China Morning Post, which is an English language newspaper out of Hong Kong, um, that claimed that Foxconn had struck a deal with uh, the state of Michigan to uh, to put a plant uh, here or to put some kind of facility here, which may be as little as a, an R&D facility or it may be a giant manufacturing plant. We don't really know. Uh, Michigan's governor, John Engler, has been in, um, in China for the past week or so uh, trying to negotiate some deals. And there, you know, there's lots of speculation and there's, there's a few thoughts about what it could be, uh, what Foxconn could be doing. You know, obviously, you know, I think everybody, probably everybody that watches this show knows that um, Foxconn is a major supplier to, uh, to Apple. They make um, most, if not all of the iPhones, most of the iPads. Uh, and they and they also produce manufacture um, goods for a lot of technology companies, and with Apple certainly developing autonomous driving systems, um, it would not be inconceivable that they would want to have Foxconn as their manufacturing partner uh, here in the U.S. Um, so it's it's possible that. You know, I think if, if Apple's doing this, more than likely they're following a similar approach to what Waymo is doing uh, with uh, designing all their own sensors using technology that they got from their acquisition of PrimeSense a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, developing their own uh, compute platform for the automated driving um, using their, uh, their processor technology that they've designed. And so they could easily have Fox, you know, work with Foxconn to establish a manufacturing presence here. Um, and because there's already a supply base here in Michigan uh, for most of the, the stuff that Foxconn would need. And, you know, Foxconn, one of the reasons that's often given for um, Apple not wanting to uh, move their manufacturing out of China is because of the, the existing supply base that's there that can respond quickly. We have a similar kind of supply base here in Michigan that can provide all the bits and pieces that Foxconn would need. Uh, to make stuff for Apple or for any other company, like it could, it could also be Waymo that uh, they're they're working with. It, it doesn't have to be Apple, but that would be the, the most that would seem like the most likely scenario. And I mean, Foxconn, it seems like has been pushing back on these statements that were made by the chairman uh, in the Chinese media on this topic. Why do you think they're not on the same page at this point? Is was it just going rogue, or <laughs> was it? <laughs> Um, you know, it, it's hard to tell. You know, it, it's entirely possible that you know the whoever wrote this up for the uh, the South China Morning Post, um, you know, may have misinterpreted some statements. Um, it's also possible that um, you know perhaps uh, Governor Snyder's Governor Rick Snyder's um, people maybe um, spoke too soon before everything was nailed down as far as the deal goes. Uh, so you know, I, I'm sure that uh, that the governor is very anxious to, you know, as a Republican, he's probably very anxious um, to make a, you know, make a good presence, support his party, you know, by bringing more jobs to the state of Michigan. Sure. Um, so, you know, it's likely that, you know, maybe his PR people got uh, a little over enthusiastic, you know, before all the, the details were worked out. Yeah. Um, how, how involved with autonomous vehicle development has Foxconn been in China? I mean, this wouldn't necessarily be replacing the work that they're doing in China. It would just be in addition to, and it sounds like you were talking about the supply base in, in Michigan being a reason why it's good to do it there. I mean, how does that tie into what Foxconn is doing as a whole, like kind of as a greater um, whole? As, as far as we know, they haven't had any involvement in developing automated driving systems in China. Uh, although, you know, the the Chinese market, um, you know, the companies that are working on this stuff over there, it's much more opaque, you know, just as it is with other businesses. Uh, so it's hard to tell who's working with who over there. But we've not heard any reports at all of Foxconn being involved in this. That said, 
you know, they produce all kinds of electronic components for a wide variety of companies. You know, their their parent company, uh, Han High Precision, you know, has a, a number of subsidiaries, and it's entirely possible um, that you know they have some business somewhere that's producing some stuff. E even if they're not involved in the auto industry right now, um, you know, their expertise in manufacturing electronics, like like phones, um, could very well be translated over to manufacturing. Um, sensors and electronic control units for automated driving systems, you know, anywhere. Um, so, oh, sorry, after you, after you, well, I was just because I was going to. So, how does you know, so given this kind of reaction to the chairman and then the the kind of the miscommunication, how does this affect what Foxconn's R and D efforts in its Chinese facilities will be? Like, what what is what does this mean for Foxconn standing? Um, it probably won't have any. I, I would guess it won't have any impact at all. Um, you know, it 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 seems like you know if they're if they are doing this, if they are going to get into producing or or developing components for automated driving. I'm not sure what happened to my background there. Uh, if they, <laughs> the illusion <laughs> if they is shattered. <laughs> yeah, Gee, you think I was sitting in front of a lake? I was um, hoping. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so was I actually. Um, <laughs> at, at any rate, um, you know, if they. This, you know, this would be an add-on to their existing business, um, you know. So I, I don't think it would have any impact in one way or the other, whether this moves forward or not uh, on any of the business they're doing already with, you know, with a wide variety of companies. Is it possible that deals like this, because it sounds like Michigan, I mean, obviously Michigan has a storied history when it comes to the automotive in industry, probably one of the most recognizable places around which the automotive industry has thrived in the past not doing so well at, at the current state by comparison, but then now we have this revitalized kind of look around technology and autonomous vehicles. And it, it seems like Michigan is becoming, you know, again, becoming a place to rally behind uh, for, for a number of reasons. Is it possible that that deals like this could revitalize Michigan's, uh, Michigan's economy in a significant way and kind of bring it back to where it once, where it once was or closer to where it once was? Yeah, I mean, certainly, um, you know, it never hurts to have a new company come in and bring new jobs into into the state. You know, whether it's Michigan or anywhere else, you know, it's 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 all that's always a good thing when when somebody is creating new business and employing more people. Yeah. Uh, so that you know, that's a good thing. Um, the one potential downside is that inevitably, you know, any of these kinds of deals, there's always big tax incentives that are given to a company. Uh, in order to entice them to to build in in your location in your state or or your city, um, you know, in the reports, you know, last week or the week before uh, the, about the, the announcement in Wisconsin with the LCD plant there, it was estimated that you know the the jobs that Foxconn would potentially be creating there would be costing the state as much as two hundred and thirty thousand dollars per job in tax incentives. You know, and that's that's not at all out of the out of the ordinary with a lot of these kinds of deals. You know, the the deal that uh, Faraday Future had made with the state of Nevada uh, to build a plant in North Las Vegas, you know, was along similar lines. Um, and so it all depends on how the deals, how these deals are structured. You know, every everywhere, you know, there's a, there's a new company coming in. There's deals like this. And depending on how the deals are structured, as long as the companies aren't necessarily given too much of the money up front. Um, then there's probably not too much downside. Uh, so, you know, it, it's important to make sure that they, um, you know, that they, they have some goals that they have to meet before they can get these incentives. Uh, so, for example, the Faraday case, you know, they, they essentially, they recently bailed out on the plans to build in Las Vegas, and they just today announced uh, that they're going to be leasing a factory in California. Uh, you know, they hadn't really done much of anything there, and the way that deal was set up with the state of, of Nevada um, you know, basically Nevada hadn't really put out any money yet to Faraday. So they, they haven't lost very much, um, as it, as it is. So it, it all, it all depends on the details.